Hello, my name is Tom Gervais. I lead the Manufacturing Science and Technology team here at Samsung Biologics. And I'd like to speak to you today about continuous manufacturing technology for existing processes, uh, specifically for uh, implementing N minus one perfusion. So first, I'd like to provide an overview of my presentation. I'd like to give a brief introduction about Samsung Biologics, uh, then discuss our multi-product facility design. Uh, then after that, talk about our implementation of N minus one perfusion, and then conclude. So here at Samsung, we have over 3,200 employees. Uh, we have 364,000 liters of bioreactive capacity. Uh, to date, we have over 98% batch success rate. Uh, we've been uh, involved in over 30 inspections. We have over 70 global clients and over 79 uh, approvals, market approvals. So our manufacturing portfolio consists of plant one, uh, which has 30,000 liters of bioreactor capacity uh, divided into six 5,000 liter reactors. Uh, this particular facility came online uh, GMP ready in June, 2013. Uh, plant two has 154,000 liters of bioreactor capacity uh, divided into 10 15,000 liter reactors, um, two 1,000 liter reactors in single use systems, and two 1,000 liter reactors in stainless steel systems. Uh, and last, or not lastly, but next we have our plant three, which has 180,000 liters of bioreactor capacity uh, divided into 12 15,000 liter reactors. Uh, this particular plant came online in October uh, 2018. Uh, this facility also has our N minus one perfusion capabilities. And the seed trains for our plants are divided up into um, five times scale up. Uh, each seed train, so for plant two, we have five seed trains uh, that supply two bioreactors, production bioreactors each. And like I said before, uh, they are scaled up 5x as they go from um, the smallest reactor up to the production reactor. Uh, lastly, we have plant four, uh, which is going to have 256,000 liters of bioreactor capacity divided into 12, 15,000 liter uh, reactors, six 10,000 liter reactors and eight 2,000 liter reactors. Uh, this is our most advanced plant, uh, it's multi-scale, it will have digitization and automation and will be more eco-friendly than our previous plants. Uh, this facility is expected to come online in 2023. So our evolution as a company or in our manufacturing facility. So starting in 2013 with plant one, we've increased our uh, volumetric capacity every, with every subsequent plant. Um, over the time in the last uh, eight years, uh, we've now grown our staff and developed much expertise and technical capabilities. Our engineering design validation has improved with every uh, succeeding plant. Um, we've been able to optimize capacity and cadence. Uh, we've also introduced multiple downstream seats uh, in plants three and soon to be plant four. Uh, we've demonstrated operational excellence through our, our performance and, and, and uh, batch uh, success rate. And we've introduced new technologies such as N minus one, uh, N minus one perfusion. So our approach to our multi-product multi facility design uh, is uh, in context of maintaining or achieving high flexibility and efficiency. Our facilities are designed to minimize delays uh, due to product changeovers uh, and annual shutdowns, and we want to maximize production cadence. So for us, we actually implemented a slowdown approach instead of shutdowns to provide the, the, the necessary preventive maintenance and still allow uh, manufacturing to go with, with little uh, impedance. Um, we've also introduced risk-based and phase appropriate approaches to validation to again, maximize efficiency. Uh, we've optimized our timelines for validation, uh, vendor management and tech transfers uh, to again, uh, increase our efficiencies. And we've also uh, have the capability for full laboratory services for process development, process characterization, and analytical testing. So now I'll talk a little bit more about plant three where we implemented our N minus one perfusion. Again, the total, total capacity in plant three is 180,000 uh, liters of bioreactor capacity and, and 12, uh, 15,000 liter reactors. 
Uh, we have two downstream suites uh, in plant three. And this particular plant operates 24 hours a day. And, and again, has been in operation since October, 2018. Here we also have uh, uh, the harvest suites. We actually have two harvest suites in addition to two purification suites. And just so, showing the two different suites here uh, from the schematic. Um, the suites are identical in terms of design, equipment, uh, validation, and operation. Uh, each harvest suite is connected to each downstream suite, and all harvest, all both harvest suites are connected to all the production bioreactors, thereby giving us operational flexibility. Uh, the centrifuge, harvest surge vessel, and depth filtration and filtration systems are how are in grade C, uh, and grade D areas is the harvest pool vessel. And as I said, we have two downstream suites uh, in plant three. Uh, again, these suites are identical in terms of design, equipment, and validation and operation. And they have a uh, pre-viral area uh, that has the, the capture chrome steps through viral filtration. Um, this is a misprint here. This should be re reversed for viral filtration. Our UFDF tangential flow filtration is on the other side of the physical barrier for post-viral. And then we have bulk fill. So now I'll talk about uh, the implementation of our N-1 perfusion process. Uh, so we have uh, 3,000 liter bioreactors for N-1, and we've implemented alternating tangential, tangential flow uh, for our perfusion systems. Now the purpose of introducing ATF, or introducing perfusion, excuse me, is to um, allow for higher cell densities to be achieved by retaining cells uh, in, the, in the reactor and removing uh, spent media. Uh, this allows us to reach uh, higher peak cell densities and higher uh, protein production much earlier or for much longer uh, when compared to tr traditional uh, fed batch processes. And in the literature it has been published that inoculation densities by enacting N minus one perfusion can be up to two, up to 10, uh, million cells per mil when compared to typical inoculation densities of around half a million cells per mil. So as I stated, uh, we implemented the N minus uh, one perfusion to achieve higher um, cell densities. And this particular graphic here shows the viability being maintained uh, where the cell viability can increase. Here, the green is what's typical or what we can expect uh, with perfusion, where the yellow here um, is what you can expect with uh, just a standard batch perfusion. So then next, we like to talk about uh, design configuration and considerations when implementing our, our N-1 perfusion. So as I said before, the purpose of perfusion is to remove the cells and spent media and then pass them through a ATF, alternating tangential flow filtration system to retain the cells, send the cells back or place the cells back into the reactor. We remove the spent media. And at the same time, we provide uh, fresh feed media to the reactor, thereby achieving higher cell densities. Practically speaking, here in this schematic is our systems for the production bioreactors here. As I said before, there are two production bioreactors. Uh, that are uh, connected to each C train. This is our 3000 liter N minus one bioreactor. Uh, each bioreactor has three ATF systems. Uh, two are in use uh, during the, the, the production. And one's a backup in case we have any type of uh, filtration fouling. And then we have dedicated uh, media hold up or media hold vessel that's 12,000 liters. And then a media um, prep vessel here that is 10,000. 10,000 liters. And the whole system is automated and the flow rate is controlled based on bioreactor level. So the next thing that we were considering after the design installation were operational factors. Um, after the design installation, we then tested and validated uh, the systems for sterility, uh, autoclavability and automation. And after that, we wanted to better understand our operation for GMP, so for controls and performance. So then we provided or started to do process simulations to model uh, the in, and predict the higher oxygen demands that were going to be required with higher 
uh, cell densities. So I'd like to talk about our development, our process simulation and scale-up. And here, what we did is we first developed a small scale models of our N minus one perfusion. And so to assist us in the transfer of an N minus one perfusion process from a client, we made two N 10 liter uh, bioreactor small scale models and to simulate the worst case operational scenarios. And those worst case scenarios would be with the maximum flow rate, which would also simulate maximum shear stress in the cells. And then we were looking at the required uh, oxygen mass transfer coefficient, KLA, and then we wanted to compare uh, cell growth profiles. So here we have um, our data from viable cell density as a function of time. The historical average from our client from 18 lots is here in the green. And our small scale model that we uh, um, developed here in the blue and then also the cell viability here, uh, again, green being the historical average from the client's process that we were transferring, and then ours is the blue. And you can see from the data that our data, uh, the small scale model matched very well with the large scale historical averages from our, our client. So next, based on these results, um, we then looked at uh, designing a new Sparger to meet the KLA and avoid uh, any high stresses uh, on our um, cells. Uh, we also wanted to uh, apply, we found that during the simulation, we needed to apply um, a new sparger, not only for the N minus one reactor, but also for the production bioreactor. And so what we did is after considering all this, uh, and in addition to considering the oxygen mass transfer coefficient, we were also looking at stripping of, of uh, CO2 from the reactor to maintain um, uh, cell health. So here, let me show you some results from this work. And these uh, data here are for the 3000 liter N minus one perfusion results and also the 15,000 liter um, production reactor. And what I'm showing here is viable cell density and viability over time. And we're showing the data here and the historical averages from our client is the, the dotted lines. You can see we fall well within the expectations uh, of production for, for our client and, and also shows that we uh, did this very well. And then also the same data for the production bioreactor, viable cell density and viability as a function of time. And you can see that the reactor itself is performing very well. So I wanna skip back or talk a little bit more about the testing and validation that we did to, to achieve operations. Um, the ATF system uh, is a stainless steel housing. Uh, this was completed in a six month period with extensive autoclave cycle development and sterility performance tests. Uh, we also did water immediate tests to qualify the operational controls and provide assurance for our closed system integrity, integrity and sterility. Um, the perfusion cultivation has now been developed with full automation, and, and we integrated the ATF systems with the bioreactor controls uh, so that manual intervention was pretty much reduced to, to a minimum or not even, not even, or not even uh, needing to do any manual interventions. And so from a GMP operation perspective, our ATF perfusion was successfully introduced and has enhanced our capabilities in plan three. And we were able to cultivate higher cell densities and whilst retaining high cell, vi high cell viabilities. Uh, this enabled us to inoculate the production bioreactors at higher cell densities and achieve peak cell densities within shorter culture durations or even extending culture durations, uh, depending on our needs. Um, we've been able to reach uh, approximately five to 50 to 90 million cells uh, per mil and from in viable cell density in the N minus one reactor. Uh, maximum uh, of three vessel volumes per day uh, using the ATF TENS. And again, a si significant reduction in production time was achieved. And lastly, here I like to show just a comparison of the production bioreactor performance uh, with and without the N minus one perfusion. Um, here in the green, I'm showing the uh, traditional uh, uh, fed batch N minus one 
and here in the blue, the uh, N minus one perfusion system. Uh, here is a viable cell density uh, as a function of time and titer as a function of time. You can see in both instances we have for this particular uh, example, uh, a two-fold increase in both cell density and titer. So in summary, um, our continuous manufacturing is definitely gaining much interest, interest in the industries uh, to achieve higher productivities. Uh, from our experiences with uh, the NMIS fund perfusion, we can show that we were increasing our efficiency, increasing productivity. Um, some key considerations uh, as we implemented the, the, the perfusion process uh, and for large scale, um, one was needing to set up an experimental lab scale model to truly understand uh, the process prior to uh, implementing at large scale. Uh, having good experience and expertise uh, with our operators uh, was very important since they were uh, critical to doing the monitoring and also any troubleshooting. On um, the large scale, continuous processing requires attention to media and harvest volumes and logistics because now you're talking about uh, large volumes, with, as we talked about before, we have a 12,000 liter uh, media hold uh, vessel and uh, 10,000 de liter dedicated media prep vessels to, to make sure that we have enough media for the N minus one perfusion. Um, efficient aeration and CO2 stripping was uh, uh, achieved and, and we were able to show high cell viability. And the design configuration uh, did play an important role uh, when implementing the ATF. So in conclusion, we were able to le leverage our facility design uh, and validation efficiencies and operational excellent to, excellence to improve our, our, our bills for future plans, but also here with our example of N minus one perfusion. Uh, we are able to maximize uh, operational excellence and accelerate our, our development of our colleagues with these plants expansions. Uh, we main, maintain high operational success and introduced again new technologies such as the N minus one perfusion as we've been able to uh, grow our business. And we're able to provide flexible client offerings uh, with respect to volume demand and process technologies. And with that, I'd like to conclude and thank you for your time and attention.